Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my recovery protocol for a torn ACL. This may or may not work for you. I'm just sharing what works for me. I recently tore my ACL, had a couple of meniscus tears, and I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and get surgery. Didn't wanna do any other options. Had surgery on my left knee, went great. Gonna have surgery on my right knee in two weeks. So I wanna share with you a few things that I'm doing right now that's been helping me a lot. You're gonna need a pair of crutches because when you first injure yourself, you're gonna be hobbling around on one leg just like I was. I would also recommend a decent pair of shoes that you can slip on and off because it's gonna be hard to walk around and tie your shoelace. You probably might not even be able to bend down and tie your shoe and bend your knee that much. So you're gonna need some easy slip on shoes. I'm gonna go over and share with you the Bragg ice machine I got. I recently, my girlfriend recently purchased this for me. Now, when you get surgery, they may or may not give you an ice machine. You may or may not need it. For me, I was in a lot of pain, and even when I tore my ACL recently, I was in some pain. So the ice machine definitely helped. Now, I will be honest, I was using rice, or ice, yeah, rice, cauliflower, and a, a, some veggie bags, but having this ice machine is very beneficial. Also, my good old Stanley, this 96 ounce Stanley, you're gonna wanna stay hydrated. Knee sleeves, knee sleeves are gonna be great for compression. I love using the Ray-Ban ones. I've used other brands, and I've even made videos on some, but I've loved the Ray-Ban. It's been my go-to, and it's lasted me the longest. I even recently bought a new pair. Just helps me a lot. My recovery tools are gonna to be the Hypervolt. I do this massage damn near daily, massaging my legs, massaging my calves. Awesome tool, I've had the original one since 2018. Got a Hypervolt Go. I've got a couple other massage guns, but these Hypervolts have always been my go-to. Of course, I can't forget the stretch band. I'll link these down in the description as well. You can get them on Amazon, either using a resistance band or just a stretching strap. I might do these first thing in the morning, depending on how the pain is. If the pain is immense, usually I'll come down and ice my knee, especially out of surgery. The first thing I'm gonna be icing the knee, and then once I get the pain and some of the inflammation and swelling down, then I'll be using a machine. I'm not sure if they're gonna give me this CPM machine. If not, I'll keep you updated. The first surgery was a blessing because I had the ice machine, I had the CPM, constant passive motion machine, and it helped out a lot. Lastly, the Mark Pro. I love the Mark Pro. I use this e-stem device. It's used in recovery. It's not just a cheap TENS unit. It's a medical grade device. It's over $1,000. It's a little pricey. I've had it since 2015. We actually have two of them. I have another client borrowing one now, but I'll use this to help uh, heal the leg, get blood flow, get circulation in there. I'll also use it to keep my leg from atrophying. So especially when I can't work out on this leg right now, I will crank this device up and it's been a blessing. All right, battery died. So back in action. I figured I'd go ahead and show you what it's like using this sleeve. It's pretty simple. So once you throw the sleeve on through the foot, like so, you have it over the top and then you'll just kind of hike it up. Your first few times getting it will be a little bit tough, but my nice combo is I like using the sleeve, slipping on my on shoes or the Lakai's, and then I have this brace. So I went ahead and locked it, um, 30 degree bend, give it a lock. In the beginning, I had it locked because I didn't want any extra bend. So we go to second from the bottom, closest to almost to the knee, to the top, all the way very bottom. Very, very top, I'm very familiar with this. So this one's pretty much locked. So when I'm walking, it's kind of like uh, a little peg leg. You know, I got a little kind of pirate step. You don't have too much bend, but I, I like the feeling of this brace on because it very, it secured the quad and the calf and at least it gave me that sense of protection. The doctor was saying, oh, you don't need the brace and that. I mean, just, it's, it's gonna be a tough first week, but I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and wear this. So definitely felt good. But um, then you can go ahead and unlock it. So I'll just pull these up and now I can get a little bit more bend. So I had it locked a little bit, uh, but you're, if you're getting surgery, obviously the first two weeks is gonna be locked. Now I have a little bit more of a bend, but this just gives me that extra security. Um, now, <laughs> when you do initially have the injury, again, when I was moving around the place, I was here, I was hopping, I would put, I would put the weight on one leg I would hop, push, hop, push, hop. You can't put any weight on it because initially it felt like it was oh, it's just gonna shock you and give out. So you are gonna be moving on crutches a good bit. I generally use these, <laughs> God, it's not like I even like doing all this, but it's just the reality of my life. First day out of surgery, I'm here. It's a step, your weight, you're, you're basically putting all the weight onto the crutches and then you're using your surgical leg and then you're putting a lot of weight on the other leg, then you move. You do not put weight 
on this surgical leg and pivot and lateral shift. It's always turn where you want to go, make sure that foot is adjusted straight, then you're going to push step and walk. So again, walking on crutches, I'm here, weight bearing here. When I want to shift, I point the crutches, point the foot, then walk in that direction. You don't want to have this sideways and go because if you lose your balance, again, you've got to have good balance. You've got to be able to hop around and also your hip flexor strength. Holy moly. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff like this because when you have surgery, you can't put any weight on that leg. So you're literally lifting this leg up and down with the brace. They have the wrap. It's a little bit heavier. It is challenging. So, oh, I mean, you could go to a, uh, a Goodwill, a donation center, and pick up some crutches. Uh, you could adjust these. This thing like moves from the bottom. You have this little pen down here, and you can kind of move this up and down however you'd like. But I just kind of keep this where it's at there. We'll move it back. So you're going to be using crutches a lot, but I only use, well, I say a lot. You're only going to be using it really the, it depends on the person. I can't actually give you advice. It's your own body. I only used it one day. So I was just kind of moving around with crutches, but I got off of them pretty fast. So crutches were done, having the brace. Then when you're feeling better, not having the brace, you're moving down just to a knee sleeve. Again, I'm pretty active and again in this studio a lot. So I generally will keep this brace on and get, I mean, I could probably go without it. Now, sometimes it just feels too hot and warm. I will take it off and I can walk, but you can even tell my leg. I mean, oh, it's just so swollen around the knee. And these used to be equally the same size. This one atrophied and got a little bit smaller. I got to bring it back, do more strength training. Uh, this is just a hot mess right now. It's very swollen here. This is all the bend I can do. I can barely, barely bend. So again, using the knee sleeve, that's going to help me kind of move around. I wanted to showcase that first with the crutches and the knee sleeve. And then next, I want to show you this icing machine. It's pretty cool because especially when I'm in pain first thing in the morning, I'm going to be I might be using something different. Uh, I had one by Connex or Connex, Connect Medical. I hope they give me that one again, but I went ahead and just got one on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Actually, my girlfriend got it for me, and it is amazing. I'm going to show you that. All right, this isn't a uh, product promo. This is just what I got on Facebook Marketplace. I am loving this right now. Bragg, I think we paid like $180 for it. I haven't studied the market. Like I said, Kat, thank you so much. She got this thing for me. Main thing I'm using is just this ice machine. It does come with some calf compression, leg sleeves. We're not going to worry about that. But all I do is I'm just going to get this thing. I'm going to plug it up. I know it looks complicated with these wires, but it's actually no big deal. So you have one. This is the main little thing with the... going to have the water, and you're going to wrap this around the knee. Um, again, it has these extra little things that you can put these calves, so you can kind of connect these calf pieces in there, but we're not going to worry about that just for the knee sleeve. So again, you're going to have this, it's going to kind of plug into the wall. Bam, we're going to plug that in. And then we're going to plug this into the back of the unit here. Little plug black there. Press this button down, twist, and then there's water in here. So uh, anyway, there you're going to see this little intake line. We're not going to kind of get into it too much, but you just fill the, it's going to say water. You fill the water up to there. And then you're going to get a little bit of ice. It's got this ice pack, and you're going to place that ice pack in there. Got the ice pack, I brought it with me in my little cooler to show you. Plug that up. We're plugged up. This thing will light up a little bit. And whenever you're ready to go, you're going to hit this button for ice. You're going to hit that button for knee compression. You can hit this one for calves. We're not doing calves. We got that. And then you put in this cool little thing. So it comes with a couple of these little freezeroni deals. Um, these things kind of come off, and then you just fill this. To the fill line, it's frozen. Well, actually, we've been here for a little while, so it's already starting to melt a little bit. But um, you just fill those to the fill line. You don't want to overfill it. Squeeze these together. It's ice. You drop it into the machine. Put the handle down. Put this dealio in. This one's simple, easy to use. And we're going to pretend this book bag as a pillow. I do like elevating the leg. I'm laying down on the couch generally when I'm doing this. And I'm just going to throw this thing on here. And we're secured on tight. Got this around. The knee, got this little controller, dealio, and then all we're going to do is hit the button. And this thing gets to town. So you're just going to lay here. I usually generally use this for about 20 minutes or so. It feels so good because as throughout the day, um, my knee just aches. And especially right out of surgery, that's what I noticed the most. It's like I was using 
this ice machine about four times a day, if not five, I'll be honest, probably about three, at least three, three to four times a day for about 20 minutes. Right when I woke up in the morning, then I would use like CPM, the constant passive motion machine. If you look at my TikTok videos, it's that machine that bends the knee back and forth. We're gonna see when I get surgery, if they're gonna uh, let me use that, I hope so, because it helps you get your 110 degrees range of motion like right out the gates. I think by day 10 or 11, could be wrong, maybe 12, I was like already there and I was trying to do, I forget, it was 10, 20 degrees a day. I was ahead of schedule, it was looking good. So you can feel this thing compress, it feels good. This is an insanely tight, a lot of compression, um, but it is, it is nice. And so some people will argue, oh, you're gonna use heat. Well, I think when there's trauma, at least for me, when there's trauma, I like ice uh, because I wanna get that inflammation, I wanna get that swelling down. Now, yeah, whenever you need to recover, you can use heat, but I'm not, I've never been much of a, a heat guy. I'll go in the sauna if I need to use heat, you know? So, but between using the sauna and using ice um, or compression, I think that helps. But this thing is nice, gives it a little bit of compression. Again, you can use these calves. Now, you don't wanna put it on one. They say you wanna put it on two to prevent blood clots. I'm not an expert or a scientist on this, but sometimes if you have just too much compression on one leg, uh, you could disrupt blood flow, get a blood clot. So that's why even out of surgery, when I had that compression sock, they wanted me to wear that um, on the other leg just to help. But again, you can kind of throw these on around the top here and it'll give you a little extra compression on your calves, which do kind of feel nice. I am looking to get the Normatec leg sleeves. Those things feel awesome. And for the first time in a while, like when I was using this knee sleeve, it felt like I needed my ankle and my foot to be squeezed because you never know, whenever your leg's in trauma, sometimes my shin is sore, sometimes my calf is sore. So yeah, this thing's doing its magic, it's squeezing it. I mean, I would say as far as firm pressure, I don't know. I mean, I'm decently strong, it's maybe 30% pressure, it, no more than, it's not a lot. The Normatec, the, the leg sleeves, you can really feel some pressure, but this is nice, it's a good cooling sensation. Um, I use it for about 20 minutes, no longer than that, really good really helps, take some of the pain away, and then I can actually walk around a little bit easier. First glance, was this thing called? Breg, pretty cool. Got it off Facebook Marketplace, look for a used machine. Sometimes these can get costly if you get a medical one. Now the Kinetics one I had was a little bit better. Uh, it was a little bit bigger, definitely put even more compression, got a little bit cooler. But uh, this thing gets pretty cool, and usually, you know, around that 25 minute mark, because like, I don't want it on there anymore, because it's, it's too cool. But it, it definitely helps mitigate some of the pain. All right, time for the massage gun. So obviously, got the Hypervolts, um, you know, I got a plenty of them over the years. Uh, Ached Away was a really good one. I kind of liked this one just because it came with a lot of attachments and uh, pretty simple to use. You throw on this thing, you hit the button, comes on, five different levels. Using a massage gun is gonna feel great because your muscles are gonna get super, super tight. But my honorable mention, I have been uh, very happy with my Hypervolt. Oh, before I even get in that, I have a craft gun too. Uh, Hypervolt's great. This one, again, you know, I just had a few of them. You can kind of turn it, you can kind of hold it, different things. You can get a Theragun if you want. This one's pretty comfortable. Again, your, mu your muscles are gonna get massaged and beat up, but over the years, I've always kind of relied on the, the Hypervolt by Hyperice. A couple of them here, you got the Mini, pretty cool. My OG one, now this one's a little loud, 2018. See, gets a little loud, but uh, then you have the new Mini here. Hold the button, hit it, level two. You can see how much quieter it is. So, same power, I think the battery's just a little bit less, but this one's nice, it's compact. You can kind of put it in your book bag or when you're traveling. No big deal, and I love this. So again, this is probably, it's hard to argue which one of these therapeutic tools is better, because they all have their place, and you gotta kinda weave them in and out like a boxer. <laughs> Trump says, the weave. <laughs> but you gotta weave these tools as you need them, because sometimes your thigh might just be like killing you, and sometimes, at the end of the day, my shin is beat up, so just being able to use this thing, and you can even go pretty low. I'm gonna take off this sleeve, and you can go down towards the base, of the ankle here a little bit and it feels good. Lightly on top of the foot, sometimes you can kind of get it over to the bones a little bit, it doesn't feel good. So I always have my hand on my shin, going through the shin, going through the Achilles, getting down in there, dropping. You gotta be careful with the knee being torn because this internal rotation could pop it and oh boy, it's not friendly, but getting into the back of the calf, sometimes I'm lying down on my stomach, getting my hamstring, oh. This hamstring gets super, super tight. 
mash it in through there. But I, I can't tell you, this is day six. I, I remember I made that video, day six out of surgery. I was using this thing and for the first time, I think, I don't think I used it the first handful of days and then my leg was just feeling so sore. But you can get this thing into your glutes and hips and I will literally use this Hypervolt or any kind of massage gun for, God, feels like 20 minutes or so. Um, it takes a while, but I would even sometimes use it on this leg too because your other leg that you're gonna be using, hopefully the good leg, you need a good leg, <laughs> or life is miserable, you wanna be using this one on that too because it's gonna be so tight, you're doing all your single leg squats and getting up and down, not saying you're single leg squatting, but you're, you're gonna be sitting down utilizing a lot more pressure on one leg. These muscles get tight and beat up. So I will, I will literally sit here and massage the thigh, go through the calves, and you don't have to go too, too long, maybe about a minute on each area, but just kind of nice and light, up and down, left and right. But your leg is gonna feel sore and already, just even from using this for a few short minutes, this thing just feels awesome. Now I won't go on top of the knee, right? I'm just gonna go around it. That's where the E stem is gonna come into place because you can really put some, uh, you can get those pads on there and you can really invigorate around the knee. But I like using this, just light pressure. Obviously you can get some lotion, you can massage. Um, I'm gonna get a deep tissue massage on Tuesday and I've been doing that bi-weekly ever since this surgery. I may usually, sometimes if I'm busy, I, I least mandatory get it once a month, but over the past year now, I've been going every other week and it's been super helpful just to keep my body relaxed and loose. So I highly encourage you pick up a massage gun. I'm sure you can get a knockoff one, but the Ached Away link in my description, I've, uh, I did a few videos on my channel, you can check that out. I've used that for a while, but I've also used these guns. And uh, these things are so compact, they're nice, and they will keep your legs, massage your whole body, neck, traps, if anything's tight, use a massage gun. It's gonna help break up some of that tissue, help support, encourage some circulation, uh, getting some blood flow, and just kind of reducing some of that pain and tightness you might, might be feeling because those muscle fibers, when they're all knotted up and tight, they're, they're interlocked. And so when you massage them and break up that tissue a little bit, it helps smooth them out, and it just can kind of decrease some of that soreness and pain you might be feeling. Mark Pro, Mark Pro, where does the time go? This has been one of my favorite devices that is honestly, I've underutilized it and I am so saddened with myself because it's one of the best tools out there. Now, it's a, probably one of the most expensive. I mean, these things run about $1,400, but it's worth every single penny. They do have payment plans. I've had this thing since 2015. It's been freaking amazing. They have a couple of channels on there. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and use one just for simplicity and ease of use. They have a little uh, you know, kit in here. You can um, read all about it that it shows you all the pad placements and things like that. It has a huge user manual and it can kind of tell you where the current goes through the body, especially when you're in pain, you can't move your leg, you just got the wrap off, you know, you're like a few days, five days, three, four days out of surgery. Uh, especially if you're a baseball player, for example, and you have Tommy John surgery, rotator cuff, anything like that, you could throw these pads on there to help a lot. Now, honestly, these things do come with the small pads. Maybe Mark Pro will, uh, you know, level up a little bit. You see these little ones? I like the large pads. I was in physical therapy and uh, we use some large pads. So um, I get the large pads, honestly, off Amazon, but all the extra lead wires, if one of these goes south, um, you can get these through the Mark Pro website. I'll have the link in the description. We'll go ahead and plug this thing on, hit the power button, take these little pads off, and we're gonna slap these on. So if they ever start not sticking as much, you can like get a little spit saliva and put it on there, whatever. Anyways, helps it stick. I'm gonna throw these around the thigh, just outside of the thigh on the quad here and on the, the inside outside, just to kind of show you. So you turn this power button on, you got two settings. You have high intensity, low intensity. The low intensity, I honestly, I never use, I always use high intensity and high intensity is more of that constant electrical surge. But with the low intensity, when you get this nice little thump, you can see, now there's a lot of inflammation and swelling. So a lot of times you can't see it as well, but the legs just kind of pulsating there just a little bit. And so what this is gonna do is just gonna help invigorate that tissue, especially if you're just sitting on the couch for a few hours, which you're probably gonna be doing a lot of sitting after uh, surgery, you can have this thing on and it's just gonna help start stimulating those muscle fibers. But what I like more than the low intensity, or like maybe if you went for a bike ride, long bike ride, your legs are just pretty, you know, fatigued. You can have both of these pads on each leg, just kind of having a stump and let your leg just sit down and this will just help with recovery. But I'll turn this off. We're gonna go to high intensity. This one gets a nice surge. So 
I want this to where this muscle is just kind of shaking a little bit. Every now and then little random little twitches. You don't want it to seize up and lock up. So for example, if I see how I can just flex. Now you don't want this thing to lock up or it'll get crazy sore, right? So I want to get this going and you can adjust the knob so where it's like kind of firing. There you go, right there, that sweet spot where it's just slowly on its own. The muscles just kind of bump, bump, moving a little bit. You don't want it to lock up, but it's, it's hard to explain. It's such a nice feeling. You got this surge of electricity just running through your nerves and it's just invigorating and it's calm and it feels good. And oh, I love it so much. It's, it's probably the reason why I don't use it as much, honestly, because I wait for when I'm in a lot of pain. But even when you're not in pain, um, it's, it's very good to help enhance recovery. So uh, I have this on the thigh. Now you won't be able to see it, but generally like around the knee, this is where Right now, it just, it's sore, it aches. So when I get this thing just around the outside there, I can just kind of feel this. Now, see, sometimes there's too much uh, inflammation. So, and you may have to play around with it. You might have to move the pads a little bit. You just got to get that setting just right. Yeah, I might move it a little bit more just so you feel it right where, you, okay, there you go, that's better. So. I have this nice little surge just kind of going in through the knee. It feels pretty good. Sometimes I'll move this a little bit and I can even get, ooh, right there, nice. So now I can get a lot more, like kind of like, I just say electricity, but current, a lot more current flowing through there. And honestly, when I use this pad for the first time, it's like I can even get more range and I can kind of move. Now I have a, a, a good bit more movement today. This is the end of week one since my uh, injury where I tore it. If you didn't see it, watch my video where I tore my ACLs in the first 10 seconds of the clip basically. But this uh, gets so much current in there and it just helps enhance the range of movement. And it just feels really good. Now I might leave this on. You can leave it on for hours, but sometimes after maybe 45 minutes, 10 hours, it's like, ah, just feels like it's done its course, it's run its course and I just wanna take it off. But this will just help, um, help with the healing process and just uh, you know, really help eliminate that kind of pain and discomfort. Now again, you could also use this for a workout. So especially what I'm gonna be doing is I won't be able to squat or lift weights with this leg uh, at least for the first couple of weeks. And even after starting PT, physical therapy, after the first few weeks, I'm gonna be doing some balance exercises, some calf stretches, some ankle flexion, that kind of stuff. But what I'll do is I'll crank this thing up with high intensity and you can watch my leg, ooh, and then bring it back. Squeeze, ah, bring it back. Flex and squeeze, oh man, I mean, it's, it's intense, it's a harder contraction than you're gonna get flexing the muscles of the gym. But I know a lot of times uh, athletes will use this and I'm not saying it's gonna be your workout, but you'll be, you're gonna really lose that sensation of being able to contract that quad after surgery. And even right now, I can't really squat. I'm just trying to put more weight on my left leg. So being able to use this, I can do like little workouts, like three sets of 15, oh, and then back it off get some flexion in the quad and it'll help prevent that muscle from atrophying. So check this thing out. It is probably, oh, I don't know. It's hard to argue which one's the best because the Hypervolt is like an immediate pain-free. But I think when you're in some intense pain, you have some, well, I'm not your doctor or physical therapist and this isn't a medical device. It's not meant to treat or diagnose or cure a disease or any kind of pain and ailments. Talk with your doctor if you have problems, but if you have a pinch or a nerve or something's kind of an issue, man, this Mark Pro really saves the day. And uh, I think when you have those intense injuries, acute and they're sharp and they, your body's really banged up and you just threw something out in your body, this thing saves the day and trumps everything. Mark Pro, gotta have it. Coming down to the bands, I like using this stretch band, but also you can use this resistance band. The stretch band is gonna be very important, I'll show you in a second, but um, I will use the resistance band a lot for these hammy kicks. So I will start off, I will kick up and down. I like doing dynamic, just to help enhance that range of movement. I'm not trying to, I can't lock out this leg yet, so I'm, it's, it's just staying a little bent because it's injured. And then also, I'll have this around the foot because sometimes you can see this ankle it wants to rotate in, so I'm kind of pulling it out and I will adjust that towards the pinky toe so I can kind of, the second I even just rotate this foot, you can see just a little bit in, boom, I get that stretch to the outside of the hamstring. So I'll even hold it there. Sometimes I'll do some holds for five seconds. I'll bring it down. I'll take a five second break. I might bring it back up. I'll hold it for 10 seconds. 
drop it down. But generally in my routines, I'll kind of do like 20 kicks up and down. Also, I'll go across, bring it out wide. Just please, if you're gonna do this, be very careful. You've gotta know your body. I haven't gotten any twinges doing these kind of kicks or anything here. Most of my twinges have been when I was standing up, but I do like to stretch the hamstrings and I feel this makes a phenomenal difference. So I'll kind of pull, boom. I mean, these are the first stretches I got from my athletic trainer. And then I'll drop this leg over and out to the side. This one really goes through the glute and the hip here. I'll kind of pull this outside of the band to straighten out that foot. I'll pull, I'll bring it back. Pull, flex, squeeze, bring it back. Pull, and then squeeze, just lying on my back or onto the side of the body here just a little bit. And I'm just gonna give it a nice tug. I'll go through there. And then also what you can do, in the beginning, this is very, very tough, but oh, I can only bend my legs so much. Sometimes I have to take the sleeve off because it's too much compression. But um, I will try this, like this is so hard. Look, I mean, my leg won't even bend any lower. So I'm gonna pull it maybe a little bit here and I'm gonna try and just hand on the outside of the knee and I'm trying to open that hip and glute, kind of like a little figure four. Ugh, I'm gonna try, cause I can't do pigeon stretches right now or anything. So I'm just trying to pull this in and open up the hip and glute. Probably one of my favorite is this 90 degree cross body trying to get this knee, oh, leg over. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll get a dumbbell. Imagine this is a dumbbell, hold it in my hand. Oh, and then I could drop this. I like bending this knee a little bit more. Like, so on this side, oh, where's the microphone? Okay, it's still my hip. So I will bend this knee, oh, drop it over, push it down. Imagine that's a dumbbell and I'm just kind of, oh, I felt my back pop, feels so good. But I like doing a lot of those stretches, especially a lot of the doing the kicks, just kind of bringing those up and down. Also, I will be seated. And like, it takes a little bit of time before this leg comes down. In the beginning, it's like that high. But especially in physical therapy, they want you to get this flat. Now you gotta be easy. Sometimes I'll even just kind of uh, lightly just push. I mean, you can even use this roller and you can lightly just kind of mash because this, this gets so sensitive. I mean, this, this leg is so swollen, but after a little while, you can see it's already starting to come down and then I'll reach, I'll try and stretch. My right hamstring is notoriously tighter, so I don't know. I'm looking at this as an opportunity. God's giving me this to make me a little bit stronger. And, and, and honestly, too, I, I was planning on going snowboarding this winter. I might have not have started recording a lot of content. I've always relied on my videographer and I've wanted to make content perfect. Um, and part of the reason I wasn't doing as much earlier because I sold my house in Tucker and then um, I'm here in Swanee now. And uh, yeah, so I wasn't able to, to film as much content, but anywho, getting sidetracked. I'm trying to stretch and uh, yeah, <laughs> I uh, got my own cameras and everything, so I'm gonna make sure I film a lot more. But anyways, trying to stretch, reaching for the toes, stretching the hamstrings. Um, I'll cross over. This is a stretch I got back almost 15 years ago, 10, 14 years ago, just simply trying to grab to the outside because a lot of times your, your, your feet might roll out, you're stretching here, but path of least resistance, my body doesn't like stretching across. And it's so tight through the outside, the top of the calf. And that's actually where I got a strain. So part of me walking right now is very tough because I have this strain in the calf. So it's not even necessarily the knees. When I wake up in the morning, this calf is so sensitive. But doing these hamstring stretches, um, and then also the other two stretches, especially what my orthopedic surgeon, he wanted me to do, was be able to get um, a lot more flexion and uh, get this quad stretch. But also, um, let's just say if I have a slider, well, yeah, I'm gonna need to get a slider. Let's get a slider. All right, got a slider. <laughs> so if you're at home, you could take off your shoes and then have your uh, you know, socks onto the floor. Um, or if you have a furniture slider or a carpet disc slider, I actually have a sliding disc workout that's really, really good, but you can use this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, this is actually one of the best stretches I first got in physical therapy because they want your knee to fully bend. And I've been doing these daily. So I'm gonna pull and grab and then try and force it because a lot of times doing it manually, that's as far as I can go and the muscles get tense so you can't flex as much. But when I, I like I, that's as far as I could do it myself manually. But when I get this around the foot and then I can go a little bit more because now the leg is relaxed. Ugh. 
and extend. I'm gonna go for about 10 reps. Just pull and bring it in, trying to get that knee to bend and extend. Again, this one actually, sometimes you'll, you'll do a lot of stretches and already this is feeling beat up. Me just shooting this video, I'm gonna go home and ice this knee because the longer I'm standing on it, the more stretches I'm doing, it's bending, it's working, it's, it's just under a lot of trauma. It's just been ripped to pieces. I have no ACL, MCL's torn, praying to God for a great surgery. So this thing is just beat to hell. But again, I'm trying to get this range of movement because I got surgery in two weeks. So I want as much range of motion as I can get. And then the other tricky little one, what I'll do is I'll uh, take off my shoe and then I'm just gonna wrap the end of this stretch band around the foot. I'm gonna kind of get it around the ball of the foot, the big part of the toe towards the pinky toe where you'd normally be like putting the weight on there. I'm gonna lie down flat on my stomach. This one I'm really, really bad at, but I'm gonna grab this. And so kind of like that one, actually, I'm gonna have this, yeah, towards the base of the foot. And then we're lying down. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to pull. Oh, oh, nice and easy. Up, oh, and then right back down. And yeah, I don't think, I don't know if I'm gonna get my heel to my butt with this torn ACL, but my first time injuring this, I've never, done all of this extensive rehab, I always tell my clients, God has blessed me with every injury in this world because it made me a better coach and a trainer. And a lot of times, I mean, I'm not saying I'm the best in the world. I'm, I'm pretty decent, but it's hard to know how to rehab this stuff if you've, unless you can get all the certifications in the world, but nothing teaches you about an injury than having the injury yourself. So experiencing that pain firsthand you just you just get better at rehabbing it too, you know. But here I'm just trying to pull and get as much movement as I can. It's still pretty stiff. Sometimes what I'll do is a PNF, proprioceptive, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, and I'll push hard and then relax, and then I'll pull it a little bit to get the stretch, and I'll push against it and then relax, and then I'll pull a little bit more and I'll push and then relax, deep breath of air, inhale, exhale. Okay, okay, got a little bit more range, not much, but I'm just gonna try and rock that. That's a really good stretch to do there. And while I'm on the subject of this, next we're gonna talk about shoes. Not gonna spend too, too much time here. Got several pairs of these. These are probably my favorite. Uh, these are the, the Cloud Ons. Uh, they have a new one, the Cloud Tilt. I haven't used that yet, but my favorite part about these is this uh, laceless system. So you literally just slip on and go, but uh, they have the cloud, I don't know, they're cloud slip on, check them out. Um, there's a whole bunch of different names. They have a, a few different variations. A lot of them are just different colors, but again, slip on, slip off, pretty cool. Also, I love these skate shoes. The Kai's are pretty sweet. These slip on and off really, really good. And actually, you know, for these size, they're a little bit roomier, so they're easier to get on and off. But I love these skate shoes. Um, I use them skateboarding a lot, but they're also just a favorite like airport travel shoe, kind of like these Owens. But I like these because they're a little bit roomier and I want something that can literally just slip on. So if I have to, I can literally just put my foot in here and wiggle and then slip on. And it's pretty simple. Same thing with these Owens. If I want to get into these now, I'm trying to be very careful because I've, I've had a little zap with these, but um, when you have to literally put on, boom, step here, you can even give it a little wiggle, but these shoes just come on and off very easily. So my uh, two favorite pairs of shoes is going to be the Lakai's and the Owens. Uh, maybe the Vans, Vans, they take a little bit more work. And like I said, when my knee is like super braced, I'm going to have to stretch this hamstring and I'm gonna, like I won't even have as much knee bend here. So I'm literally gonna have to drop the shoe. I'm gonna have to, you gotta be super flexible with your hamstrings, have your hips loosen up, hammy's gotta be loose because you're gonna be bending and trying to, to get these shoes on. You might be sitting down, for example, and then trying to you know, put these the shoes on and stuff. This leg's gonna be super stiff. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have the mobility. Um, Cause again, how I get up and down right now is crossing this foot, pushing and, just hobbling around, I kind of like almost dragon squat on the way down. Uh, when I come back up, I'm here, I flip and I inchworm up and I'm down and 
That's what I'm saying. You're going to have, a, have a lot of, you've got to have a lot of mobility when you're injured. Um, and you want the right shoes to just be able to slip on and off because it's going to be a nightmare trying to tie shoes, especially having a knee injury and dealing with that. And that's going to wrap up everything I'm doing for my recovery as of right now. This is a one week fresh injury. I am walking a lot better today, but in the beginning I was barely walking at all. And so most importantly, like if you need to get crutches, like I said, you might as well try and go to a donation center, get some crutches because you're not supposed to put any weight on that leg. And there's been a handful of times, I can count at least seven or eight where I was like, ah, got that, that zap. And man, I, I, I wish it on nobody, not my worst enemy to ever have a torn ACL. So in closing, you gotta make sure Okay, that other leg is strong. I, I'll, I'll argue that it's the most important thing you can do in your life is train your legs because the second you can't use one leg, your life changes instantly. And it's so much harder. And it took me a week to finally get used to just training this leg. And I'm still working out. Like the other day, I did a single leg press, single leg Romanian deadlifts, um, worked a little bit of chest, did some single leg bench squats, and then still putting... 80, 70% of pressure on the leg. I can finally, after one week, put a little bit more pressure on this leg, but using all the variables and all the tools, not the variables, but using all the tools, like I mentioned today, doing the icing, which for me, it works. If you're in pain and you've got a huge knot and it's swelling and it hurts, go ahead and ice it. You know, you can use a vegetable bag or you can use an ice machine, get one on Facebook Marketplace. The knee sleeves really help for compression, even wearing it right now, it's got that warming sensation. It really helps keep it uh, mobile and it, it, for me it just it, it feels like like the doctor said I could use like I don't need it but it just gives me the extra layer of security I like the compression it feels good I feel like it definitely helps me keep a little bit stable but even wearing a knee sleeve my knee can still be a little off so you can't put any weight or lateral shift on that injured leg also the mark pro e-stem oh man it's probably one of the first recovery tools that got back in 2015 make sure you are using that stimulating the muscles doing that pain recovery option is going to really help uh, you know, get that blood flow, get that circulation, put fresh blood into that muscle and help it heal. It's going to be able to, you know, sometimes when you're, it's so swollen, you can't massage it. Maybe you can lightly use your hands, but uh, getting that electrical stimulation is really going to help. Also, the hypervolt, the massage, your legs are going to be feeling like they're beat up. So I use that a lot too, first thing in the mornings, massaging my legs, my hamstrings. It was like day six or seven out of surgery. I was really using that. And sometimes like my shins hurt just because, or my calves or my hip or my glute. And so I can get that hypervolt on there and it really helps save me from a massage session. Of course, you can't forget, drink plenty of water. I keep that Stanley, that 96 ounce bottle with me at all times. And that's gonna make sure I'm absolutely hydrated. I drink my collagen, my greens, beetroot powder, all that good stuff, creatine first thing in the morning. And then I drink that Stanley throughout the day. And if I, I might even get an extra 16 ounce bottle or two just so I don't miss. And that way that can get me close to 120 to 150 ounces of water sometimes throughout the day. It's what works for me, especially sitting around 200 pounds now, being fairly active. Um, I'm, I'm dehydrated right now. And now I don't always hit those water goals, but I need to make sure I do. And so I try and, use these tools like the early hydration, a window in the morning where I drink those greens, get in a Stanley cup, keeping water bottles in my studio when I'm training clients so I can always make sure I have plenty of water. And of course, having the right shoes, wearing these ons, uh, O-N, uh, these slip-on shoes really help a lot, or the Lakai's like I mentioned. The Vans I really like too, they're a little bit more oomph to get on, great for skateboarding, so love the Vans, stylish, like the Lakai's, easy slip-on, ons are my go-to. So. That wraps everything up for today. I really hope this helps. If you're watching this, I hope this helps you on your journey. If not, I think this knee recovery protocol is gonna be great, even if you just have bad knees or you're trying to rehab them without surgery. But especially if you're gonna get surgery, follow me because um, I'm about to get it and for the second time and I'm no stranger to rehab and recovery. I feel I'm really good at it. And the reason why I'm able to walk as well as I am today is just because of the fact that I have taken my rehab seriously. I spend a couple hours a day doing it. I don't always make the time to train for a couple hours a day, which is crazy. And when I say training a few hours, you know, from warming up to doing the cardio, doing the mobility, doing the stretching and the workout, it can take a couple hours. But when I get injured, lights go on uh, full throttle and I am all about rehab because I want to recover as fast as possible, as safe as possible, heal quickly so I can get back to living my life normally. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you and I can't wait to see you in the next video.